So in this session, we are going to go through the entire sales process um, from lead through to opportunity to then converting to uh, a customer account. So what we first need to do, if we imagine that we've, um, I don't know, met, met somebody at an event or they've inquired through our website, is actually to create the lead in the system. Now, I showed in our first video in navigating around Dynamics for Sales, that it's very easy to quickly create something from that shortcut menu at the top right. Um, I often recommend that as our rule here is if it's not in Dynamics, it doesn't exist. So if you're caught off guard and picking up the phone and you want to create something quickly without having to navigate through to leads and then creating a new lead, you can just quickly create one there. But the example we're going to use here is starting with leads um, and we're going to create new. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just click on um, new inquiry for XYZ. Um, I'm going to say this is for Sarah Smith. Um, top job title director. Everything marked with an asterisk is compulsory, um, so it won't let you start entering information in other areas of this lead record without um, first entering those compulsory fields. But now I've filled out the compulsory fields, I can click save on the bottom right, um, and it will now open up our timeline um, and any of the other extras if we are using, say, the, uh, the enterprise version of Dynamics for Sales. So I'm just going to quickly enter in a few more details. I'm just thinking 56789, there's a phone number, boring I know. Um, I won't bother entering a, a dummy email address, um, but we'll say that she is part of, you know, company Z. Um, again, not going to fill in website information. I'm just filling in the crucial information so you get an impression for what is a, is a must-have. But of course, as we showed in navigation, you can go into details, you can enter contact preferences um, and all of those good things. All right. So again, I'm just going to save just to, to make sure that we are um, capturing everything that, that we've entered. A couple of other things that we can then add in before we then move on to any other steps. Um, so if I click on the drop down next to um, the mod administrator name here, I can enter a, a couple of other bits of information. So lead source is always a good one. So let's say that we did see them at uh, a trade show, for example. We can capture that information so that it then filters through into our reporting when we're doing sort of close one loss analysis of all the business that we bought on. Obviously, there's no point in us spending money on lead sources or marketing that isn't yielding any sort of result for us. So that's that's handy to have. We can then set a rating, and when we start looking at list views, we'll be able to see how we can start um, refining lists. But if you did watch the video on activity management, you can see how you can sort of filter through lists based on priority or rating. So that was quite a good one. Um, and then uh, the last one that we've got is, is owner. Now, obviously owner is important because when people log into the system, they're likely to want to see the stuff that they own first rather than everything that's going on, just so that they can stay focused. Um, so as I say, this is assigned to, to myself as mod, mod administrator, but it is here that we can then search for other people that we may want to assign this to. Um, we can do that by changing the name, or we can click this assign button at the top here if we want to as well. So easy enough. It's not complicated once you get used to what all the fields mean and where everything is. So let's just add a, a couple of bits to the timeline. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll enter in a, a completed phone call, one that we've just had. Um, so say wants more info, um, definite opportunity here, definite op here, there we go, save that and close. We've also got save and create new if we wanted to create another task at the same time, just going to complete that off. And the reason that I'm doing this is because we'll see once we've qualified this lead and it then jumps into opportunity stages to unlock these develop, promote and close stages, how all of the activity timeline retains intact. But before we do that, I just want to draw your attention to some areas that we need to be conscious of. OK, so first name and last name, they will automatically be created as a contact under our contacts once we click qualify. In the same way, company Z will also be created as an account. Yeah, so just a, a couple of things that are happened in the back that will happen in the background once you convert that lead. Um, you know that the, the system will do for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, if you are creating a lead from an existing customer, or you know that you've already got Sarah set up as a contact within the system, um, then you can set that up. So if we go into qualify. Um, we can actually look for um, existing contacts and existing customers um, just to make sure. Um, so, you know, there are ways to match it up to uh, accounts and contacts if you don't want it to create that record automatically for you once you qualify it. Okay. Anyway, we're going to qualify now, assuming that we've gone through this qualification stage 
and we're now wanting to move on to, to develop this. Okay. Now, what it has done is it has found a duplicate, which is useful because obviously we don't want to end up with a load of duplicate information. I'm not bothered considering this is just a trial environment. I think I've created a, a Sarah Smith before, um, but we'll just create uh, this, uh, this opportunity and click continue there. So what we'll see now is we've jumped from qualify and we're now into this develop stage. And we can also see now that leads is no longer highlighted, opportunities is now highlighted, okay? We can see that Sarah Smith has now been created as a contact and she'll sit there if we were to, to go directly to our contact records. And then we can see company Z here has been created as an account, um, which will sit there. And, and of course, you know, we can click through to those to go into to that record if we want to see all of the associated activity with either a contact or, or an account outside of this opportunity, okay? So we can continue making notes, you know, creating follow-up activities, appointments, synchronizing with Outlook as we looked at in previous videos. Um, but now we've got some other information that's useful to, to enter. So if we are doing forecasting, um, then we'll want to enter a close date, for example. So if we think it's going to close, say, the end of next month, we'll put the end of February, estimated revenue, depends um, what, what your average value is, but then we've got estimated revenue there. Obviously, the more data you've got in the system, you know, the, the more you'll be able to get out by way of reporting and analysis. So again, you know, it's all, all about having that data. Um, whatever doesn't get measured, doesn't get managed. Um, that old saying there. Okay, we've also got some other fields that we can enter in as well. So current situation needs. Um, these fields can be tweaked. You can add in fields, you can take away fields. Um, does get a bit advanced though. So if you did need any more support with that, then obviously give us a shout and we'll have a chat through how we can facilitate that. But what you'll find as you move through these stages is you've also got prompts under each one of these sections. Okay, some prompts linked to fields. So that customer lead relates to the field that you've just seen there. But there's also other prompts for your sales team as well. So have we identified the relevant stakeholders? Yes, we have. Have we identified the relevant competitors? Yes, we can. If so, we can move along to the next stage and then we can see that propose is now highlighted with a different set of instructions, okay? Again, these processes can be changed. So if we go into processes, um, and we have multiple processes depending on type of opportunity, we can switch there. Um, but if we were to go into settings, advanced settings and go into processes, you will see that there is a way that you can actually amend those process flows, either to include more stages or to add in or remove fields that act as prompts for the sales team. OK, but we'll, we'll follow this through. So we'll click on propose, say that we've done all of this. Um, and you don't have to click all of this off. You know, it's, it's useful because obviously you can latch onto this information. Um, go to the next stage so that we are in that closed position to complete the final proposal and, and so on. Conf confirmation of decision date is also there if you want to. Um, that might be useful if you're wanting to compare the decision made date with the actual close date. You know, so again, useful information. But let's imagine that we've now won this opportunity. We'll click on close as one. Um, we've then got uh, a bit of information. So what was uh, the, the reason? So obviously won, won or lost. Um, we've then got revenue, close day, and then a little bit of a description. Um, competitors are locked, are locked here. Um, we're just using the professional version, so we don't have that facility. Um, but then a bit of a description on any further detail that you may want to, to access when you're doing your reporting. Okay. Anyway, I'm just going to click on OK. What will happen now is it will close off that opportunity as one. So we can see on the timeline here, we've got uh, opportunity completed by me for 20 grand, which is great. If I want to see a list of closed one opportunities, then I can click on my opportunity list. I can go to here and then I can click on one opportunities. Um, so I think that one was called interest or something, something along those lines. I'm not going to search for it, but that will uh, appear in your one opportunities list. And then if we go into accounts, um, navigate down to company Z, um, then we'll be able to see um, a snapshot of, of that information as well. Because the opportunity was associated with the customer account all the way through the process, you are likely to get all of the updates that are conducted or that appear within leads and opportunities summarized in the customer page. So it's good the way that everything links together. If you do want to shortcut to any opportunities or leads that have been closed, one, you know, uh, closed, lost, qualified, disqualified. Again, as I mentioned in navigation, you can go into related. So let's look at um, opportunities. So we'll just go into opportunities here. Um, it will give us an opportunity, uh, opportunity associated view um, and we can go directly back into that opportunity if we want to see all of that history. Um, very easily. So it's easy to track that that process back if we need to. Okay, so a very quick whiz through of how we create something as a lead, create it, uh, then sorry, qualify as an opportunity, and then win that opportunity, 
um, to then mark that revenue as closed one against that particular customer account. Okay, we've then got a number of list views that we can use um, using closed one opportunities to work out how much we've actually won um, that we can then export to Excel. Um, you know, and, and use for for our management reporting. Okay, but we will look at list views and exporting to Excel in in a different video. Um, so if you do want to search for that, then please feel free to. Um, but hopefully, that's given you a, a really good insight into the standard process within Dynamics for Sales. Um, everything from creating a lead through to winning the business. To order Dynamics 365 licenses or to sign up to a 30-day free trial, navigate to d365.link forward slash now.